Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. It's one of many YouTube channels out there where guys talk about watches. And I know some of them have some, you know, some really big followings as far as, you know, they, they'll get a lot more views on their videos than I get on mine. And that's okay. Uh, I know, and some, some people are talking about different watches, lots of different brands, and I'm kind of concentrating mainly on Casio, and, you know, that's just my experience. Now, I happen to see one fellow in particular, and I won't name names, but, well, he has a very successful channel. I can see by the views and the subscribers and all of that, and that's great for him. When he talked about Casio watches, however, he said that he didn't like multiband 6. He didn't think that multiband 6 really worked. He thought it was a gimmick, and he wished that uh, Casio just dropped that feature and didn't, uh, you know, provide that anymore, and maybe they could charge less for their watches if they didn't have multiband 6 available anymore. And, you know, why do you have to badmouth one of my favorite things about Casio watches, <laughs> multiband 6? Uh, so I thought I would respond, and also, you know, I know some people actually do have problems with reception uh, of WWVB for their radio-controlled watches and clocks. So is there something I could do to kind of clear the air and help people with their reception problems that they might have with these clocks and watches that are supposed to automatically set themselves to the right time? I'll see what I can do. Now, I realize that where I am right now in Utah, I'm, I'm just one state away. Right about over there is where, um, you know, Fort Collins is where the WWV and WWVB radio stations are, their transmitters. And so if you drew a straight line on the map, you know, not following the highways, but just a straight line, I'm about 350 miles away from those transmitters. And I really, you know, get some very impressive reception, pretty consistent reception for my radio controlled clocks and watches here. So that's just the proximity is, is causing, you know, that advantage. But, um, you know, there are other things that uh, maybe you could take into account to try to help the radio reception where you are. Now, where I am right now, look at this. Uh, half the house is, is a basement, right? And behind this plaster is a concrete wall. It's about that thick, right? And this concrete wall inside of it has, you know, rebar, steel reinforcement uh, going vertically and horizontally. So it's a concrete wall full of metal. That's what I got here. And, uh, well, that is something that will uh, inhibit radio reception. So, already, half the house down here downstairs, you're going to have some difficulties with your radio-controlled clocks and watches. Um, now, one way you can kind of figure out whether or not you have a general radio reception problem, get yourself one of these, or maybe you have something like this, supportable AM radio, okay? Tune in your favorite, you know, maybe talk radio station or just whatever, something that comes in relatively clearly, and uh, then just go around and uh, listen to this and see what the listening conditions are like and the, what the reception would be like in different places around your home or where you work or in your car or whatever. And figure out, because the, the type of uh, radio transmission that's coming from over there, it, it's these long range uh, radio waves and it's similar to AM radio. So what I'm gonna say is if there's a place where AM radio reception is difficult, that's also going to be likely a place where WWVB radio reception and, and shortwave radio reception will be difficult as well. The, the nature of these, uh, these, uh, these radio broadcasts, the frequencies they're using, is that the broadcast goes out from the transmitter and as it uh, reaches kind of the curvature of the earth or whatever, or, or obstacles, what it'll do is it'll bounce off of, the, off of the, the ground and go up into the atmosphere. And then at a certain distance up in the atmosphere, it'll bounce off the atmosphere back down to the ground, back into the atmosphere, back down, up and down. And so that way the, uh, the radio transmission is able to travel pretty far, maybe hundreds of miles. In the case of WWVB, it should go out you know, like 2,000 miles from there. Uh, provided you have good reception conditions. So uh, that's, that's the nature of that. Whereas like FM radio, it's more of a line of sight. And if there's a mountain in the way, uh, you're done. You know, or as you get just far enough away that the curvature of the earth starts to interfere, you're done. Uh, television, FM radio are kind of more line of sight. Where AM radio, 
and shortwave radio, these long range transmissions are more of a bounce off the atmosphere. So anyway, back in the 1990s, I used to work at a radio station and I actually spent a lot of time listening to a portable radio when I was off the clock, you know, doing my business around town. I would be listening with earphones on and, and, and had a lot of experience in figuring out where were some places where radio reception wasn't very good. And I noticed one in particular, just almost immediately when I walked into a shopping mall, radio reception just stopped on AM. And so why is that? Well, I figured out that uh, shopping malls, there's a lot of metal in the construction. So again, metal being something that is effective at blocking radio reception. So, you know, the, the main structure of the mall, uh, usually they use a lot of metal framing in between the stores and any of the walls in the stores, and especially uh, the, the ceiling, the, the ceiling trusses, the roof itself, it's all metal and radio reception just dead, okay? So I noticed that also in the late 1990s, I got my Yunghan's Mega Clock, and if I saw kind of a high-end jewelry store or a you know, watch store, clock store in the mall, if any of them had the Junghans Mega Clock that they were selling there, either the, you know, the tabletop version or the wall version, uh, almost invariably it wasn't working right because it wasn't able to receive WWVB inside the mall and because uh, with that particular clock there was no way to manually set the time. You can set the time zone, but after that, if the clock is not able to receive WWVB, it just will not set. So I would see those and I'd be very sad to see a Junghans Mega Clock on display that wasn't working right. And what are the, spoke, what are the folks doing there that they work there? What are they supposed to say is, hey, here's this clock that sets itself, but it doesn't really work here. But if you take it home, trust me, it'll work. So, all right, I understand that uh, inside shopping malls, radio reception is going to be bad. Also, um, do you live in a high-rise apartment? Do you live downtown where there's a lot of things that could uh, cause radio interference? If your apartment building is taller than probably, you know, three or four stories, I'll bet that a lot of the structure is made of metal instead of lumber, and that's going to be a problem for you if you're trying to use your radio-controlled clocks and watches and you live in a structure like that. Or if you've got one at the office and your office, a lot of office buildings are made not out of lumber, but out of metal materials. And so that's going to be a problem there. Now, in my house, I just showed you how the basement is, uh, you know, all that concrete reinforced with metal. But uh, have no fear, up here, the upstairs of the house, is, uh, it's got a stucco exterior. So that should be fine, right? Uh, no, actually, no, because <laughs> the upstairs, the way it's built, okay, if you're inside the house, you're going to be looking at drywall covered with paint. Okay, beyond that drywall is lumber. And you've got a few inches of lumber there for the two by fours and the studs and you know the walls and everything. And then you've got you know that OSB lumber, the, the the sheets of lumber that are the exterior wall. And then outside of that is the stucco. It's just plaster, you know, it's fine. But how do they stick the stucco to the lumber? Well, they use some kind of metal mesh, not quite exactly like this, but something kind of like this and cleaner. And uh, they attach this to the lumber and then they attach the stucco to here. And so you're kind of living in a, in a metal cage <laughs> everywhere where there's stucco on the wall and that's going to affect your radio uh, reception as well. So how did I get lucky enough that I can get pretty good radio reception even in my basement and even in the upstairs where there's all this stucco? Well, first of all, I am again pretty close to WWVB. And also I do kind of move my clocks around and make sure I have them hung up or sitting uh, on tabletops or window sills close to windows because it turns out windows do not block radio reception quite so much as this stuff that's made with metal and concrete. So you may have to look for that in your situation depending on where you live. And again, the farther away you live from WWVB, the more it's going to be a factor. Look for windows. See a place where you can set your watch up at night near a window and kind of facing Colorado. That is actually some of the advice that you'll get from the folks at WWVB, from the clock and watch manufacturers. Try to put it by a window facing Colorado. And I'm talking specifically about here in the United States. I know that multiband six in particular works not only in the United States, but if you're over in England, 
there's a transmitter in the UK that your watch will try to uh, use to get its data, or there's one in Germany. There are the two in Japan. If you're over in Asia, there's one in China. So if you're in those places, you know, your experience may be different from, from my experience, which is, again, mostly talking just about WWVB and mostly talking about just here in the Western United States. Now, I have to tell you, unfortunately, my friends, modern advances in technology are working against us as far as this radio reception stuff goes. Here's something that uh, is, is really super convenient. It's a little flashlight, okay? Um, simple little LED flashlight, and uh, you put it in this charging base, okay? And the way you can set it up is that uh, if you have a power failure, or if you just want to grab the flashlight and go, uh, it'll, it'll constantly be charging down here, and as soon as you grab it out of the base, it automatically turns itself on. Or as soon as the power, there's a power failure, it will automatically turn itself on, so you're not in the dark in the kitchen or wherever you have this thing. That's great, and it has this wireless charging. See, there's no electrical contacts on here or in here, so, uh, you know, all you do is set it in there and it charges itself. Wireless charging, it's the new thing. Uh, you could have it with something like this or maybe like an electric toothbrush. So you don't have to worry about getting shocked or having some, uh, you know, electrical contacts getting damaged because of moisture in your bathroom or wherever you're charging your wireless toothbrush. Just a little cradle. That, uh, that's great, except the way that it charges is something called an inductive charging, okay? So what happens is this base is is emitting an electromagnetic field that interacts with this when it's in the charger, okay? But the electromagnetic field uh, that, that emanates from this actually goes out several feet and causes radio reception interference. So uh, I had one of these on a, you know, on a bathroom wall and I had a clock about oh, three or four feet up the wall uh, away from it. And of course, the moment I I put this and plugged it in and it was emitting that field all the time. That clock no longer received the WWVB uh, you know, transmission the way it should have. And then I had one in the kitchen and uh, the, the opposite wall and a few feet up uh, you know, in another room, that clock was no longer able to receive WWVB because this thing was putting out an electromagnetic interference uh, field. Okay, so... What about your iPhone or, or some other product of phone or tablet or, or watch or whatever that you have that uh, you're able to use that with wireless charging? What's that doing? Same as this. It's emitting an electromagnetic field that's going to interfere with radio reception for anything that happens to be around it. So then, what are some other fun sources of electromagnetic interference? Well, of course, it's everything you love to use. Uh, your computer, your TV, computer monitors, uh, anything with a motor in it, the microwave oven, any major appliances, your fridge, uh, the blender. Now, I don't know if you'd keep your radio-controlled clock next to the blender and leave the blender running all night long, but you get the idea. All of these things can create electromagnetic interference, and that's going to mess up <laughs> your atomic time reception on your favorite watch or clock. Now, um, here, here's something you can do just, just for the fun of it. If you have one of those little uh, portable radios I was talking about, okay, uh, go near your TV. Turn the TV off, okay? Turn on the radio to, the, to your favorite AM station, okay? Talk or music I, or news, I don't care. Uh, and put it right next to the TV, tuned in, and enjoy listening to that radio station on the AM dial, and then turn on the TV and listen to what immediately happens when the TV <laughs> comes on. <laughs> so, so, okay, we're up against some, uh, some difficulties here. It's an uphill battle, but I'm telling you, if you can mitigate the, uh, the sources of, you know, that electromagnetic interference, those things that will either uh, interfere with radio reception actively, like a motor, or passively, like metal construction and a metal roof and, and stuff like that. And again, watch for things that are inside the walls, you know, electronic wiring and things, or things that may be in another room. Hey, if you're living in an apartment, I don't know, maybe one of your walls in your bedroom is right up against the neighbor's wall of their bedroom. They may have their iPhone wireless charger right next to that wall, and you can't figure out why nothing in that room works when it comes to you know, multiband six or some other, you know, radio controlled clock reception. So. Uh, these are some things to watch out for, but I'm hoping 
that uh, you can make some minor adjustments and not have to completely move your whole family to within 350 miles of, of Fort Collins in order to fix this problem. I really want you to have the best experiences possible with uh, Multiband 6 and other uh, radio controlled clocks and watches uh, that, that, you know, that, that have that function, even if it's not a Casio official Multiband 6 product. Uh, yeah, I'd say look for windows, look for sources where there's less interference, and just you might have to face the fact that some types of buildings are just not going to cooperate with you at all, like a shopping mall. I'll tell you one quick story, and this is a sad, disappointing thing. Uh, over here, not too far away from where I live, they built a new elementary school to service this entire valley. And the principal at the time was all excited to equip every room in the school with a radio-controlled clock. He got them maybe from Clockit or someone that was using similar uh, equipment to what you can buy from Clockit. Okay, so these ready-made clocks, put them all over the school in every room. Atomic clocks for every room. And the only problem was the school had everything working against it as far as metal construction. It had motion sensors in every room to, to help turn the lights off. Fluorescent lights can also cause problems with radio reception. And uh, of course, then the metal roof and the metal everything. And so uh, some of the classrooms that were more around the perimeter of the school, especially on the side that was more towards Fort Collins, they did okay. But most of the clocks around in the interior of the school and other parts of the school, the radio reception, uh, just the clocks just didn't do it. They all had to be manually set. And this was so disappointing. So. Uh, maybe I haven't made the case for <laughs> multiband 6, but I think I have made the case for... I just need to insert one thought here. You know, in our digital world today, we got a lot of devices. They usually interact well with each other. They sometimes interfere with each other. Even your favorite computer every now and then will lock up, freeze up. You have to reboot it. Do you then say, this computer is a piece of junk, I hate it? No, no, you just, you deal with that. Uh, you might have to reboot your phone from time to time, your tablet, your TV. Uh, if you've ever set up an over-the-air antenna to get, uh, you know, TV, just regular over-the-air TV, like, like old school. In the digital age, you have to spend some time aiming that antenna, tuning it in just right to make it work. I'm just saying that multiband 6 and radio controlled clock reception is the same way. You have to work with it a little bit, be a little patient. Remember, it's not maybe going to work perfectly every time, but that does not negate the beauty of the technology and, uh, and, and how much it works really well for some folks and for most folks. And once you've figured that out, I hope you have a good experience with this technology and I hope I've somehow have given you some sort of tips to help you have uh, better experiences with radio controlled clocks and watches. Okay, that's all for now. I've got more videos coming up, including watch reviews, can you believe it? And that'll be on uh, an upcoming you know, more upcoming new episodes of The Good Timekeeping Show.